All right. So uh, Rob asked me to show some tools. I just uh, I was talking with him about uh, a return from a mastermind that I was at. I, I use a platform, which I'm going to show you guys. We'll kind of be in and out of it. It's called Sisu, um, but it's only really as good as, as we are. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Sisu had a mastermind and I was the, by leaps and bounds, the smallest team in the room. The next closest team to me was 750 transactions a year. And most of them were well into the thousands. Um, so I got to, to hang out with some giants for sure. Um, so you, I just want to point out some of the notes. Like if, if, you're a, if you want two people on a team, a lot of the stuff will work. But if uh, I'm kind of the way I'm gearing it is for uh, doing a lot of transactions. And you'll note here that like if um, this is Sisu that you're seeing on the screen right now. And I just want to make sure everyone's seeing it. Good. Yes. Okay, so so Sisu has uh, a couple of things. So we have challenges, and the challenges go nonstop. Um, we pretty much run them for different events. So I'll give you an example. Leaderboard is just based on numerics. Um, generally speaking, I don't participate uh, just as a team leader, but I put it up there for the purposes of reference, and it also skews the numbers a little bit. Um, so, like, for instance, uh, our goal this year is 300 transactions in 2024. Um, our stretch goal is 400. So the everything that we do, our talk is completely about this, right? So it's a, it's about three hundred and twenty four, right? And that's all we talk about. This this is also on a big screen in the wall in our main team area, so everyone has it in their face all the time. Um, <clears throat> we kind of structure everything around this. Uh, so when I talk about all the future activities and all the things we do. There's just a very, there's very few things that we make and measure. <laughs> so, um, and for us, conversations and appointment met, obviously you have to set an appointment, but conversations and appointment met is all we talk about. That it's our complete driving force. Nothing else matters. All the, every, every sharp and shiny object you see out there, it means nothing to us except for these metrics. Um, we do have, we do other things. Like I have a buyer seminar challenge right now. So, Whoever does three of them before May 31st, they will get a free iPad from the team. And so we put out some pretty big bogeys and that's no small event to hold three of those before May uh, 31st. So we, we drive off of this and, um, and we run these events. Uh, the appointments met appointment conversations. Whenever there's a problem, I start running an event, right? So, I, um, so we noticed that our, our, uh, our February started off slow. I ran an event and we're right back on track. This dashboard, literally ties to everything we do. They don't enter anything. It all happens automatically. So I'm going to kind of double back for a few minutes just to give you some context. So Rob asked that I cover tools, but Sisu is the core to what uh, primarily we do. Outside of that, let's talk for a minute. I'll double over to some AI uh, powered stuff that we use. So we're a very big Opus Clip user. Uh, Opus Clip takes videos, preferably talking videos, and makes them into small clips. Sometimes it'll stack them one above the other vertically, but in general, it's, uh, it takes small clips. Now I've dropped a video here when we were getting started because it takes a little bit of time to upload. And th this is as simple as I drag and drop the video right here. And then down below, you can set how you want them to look like with the caption karaoke uh, and how the wording will look. And then you can tell how long you want the video 30 to 60 seconds, and then you say, <clears throat> give me the clips, basically. Now, the reason I started that here is it's going to take a little bit of time. I'm not doing anything else in the background, and then we're going to move on to the rest of the presentation. I'll double back to this. So essentially, I've uploaded a longer video. I think this video was like two and a half to three minutes long, and this is going to cut it up into smaller clips that are ready for social media, and I haven't done a thing. It'll, it'll pull them out and tell me how likely they are to be uh, viral or better in terms of viewing. So this will happen. It's going to take about 16 minutes according to the screen here. So I'm going to leave that up um, on another screen and we're going to cover off uh, some other things that we do. Um, everyone's got the gist of Opus Clip, how that works? All right, cool. So uh, let me talk about, I have a list here. So the social media posts for teams. So I found that the team uh, was, they say they want to do social media posts and they never did. Everyone has good intent of how to do it and what they're gonna do. But what we did was we kind of industrialized it. So in Sisu, we have a bunch of things we do. These are called activities. Activities are things that drive business. 
So a good example is we have a morning rally call every single morning. Um, it's actually been changed uh, in, in recently in terms of the naming. They didn't like the huddle term, so we went to the morning rally. And as they as they complete them, like today I'll complete it, I add one more to my increment. These all get logged into an activity database, which report back to a dashboard. And for instance, the dashboard will cover off all of these activities. So if you look down here, it shows how many people have attended our morning rallies. It shows how many social media posts have been done for the day. And I can drill in and see who did what. The reason it's important is people take the social media aspect as um, kind of like a, 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 I'm going to get to it. I'm, it. It's not as important or it, I'll get to it when I get to it. Uh, to date, we really don't make any outbound phone calls of consequence, cold calls. We don't we don't dial expires. We don't dial things. In fact, Stephen on my team, he was dialing for dollars. He was doing fizzbos. He was doing expires like a madman. He was doing like I think it was to the point of some days 300, 300 calls a day through the Mojo dialer. He stopped completely in the month of February. He said, "I'm never making another phone call. I'm stopping making phone calls." And by the end of this year, he was at nine point eight million in production. 1.8 to 9.8. And the reason was he doubled down on social. He doubled down on being an expert in a particular area, not being the broadband expert. And he attributes his success to how we monitored his activities, how we paid attention to what he would do with his activities here. So we actually run um, all of our activities through this. Every single day, everyone on their phone has an app. When they close out at the end of the day, it logs into this app and tells us what we're, what we're doing. Um, when it comes to social media, I don't, we have two methods. I call them, and I, I bring up social because I'm going to touch on how AI does that with us. <laughs> um, so for social media, we have social media posts, and then we have what we call body in motion posts. So social media posts are the standard old, I'm a realtor, boring as hell. I'm putting up a post and you might read it, you might not. The body in motion posts are posts of people moving. I mean, when I say moving, I mean my agent's actually uh, doing something. And Christine has been on fire lately with these, and her business is through the roof. So she's been doing a lot of posts with in person. You notice something? She's not all beautifully made up. She's not waiting for the perfect picture. Um, it took so long to get her over the hump of just to take the damn picture. So let me just show you some things, and some of them have gone pretty on fire. Um, I'm just trying to find one. She she was in a house, and it had a boxing. Oh, here's one, her digging, found an oil tank. She said, hey, can you take a video? I'm gonna dig. You know damn well she's not digging, but social media wise, she got someone that said, wow, she's a hands-on agent, she's gonna come. Um, boxing, she had one in the basement where she had a boxing ring. So these are called body in motion posts. We require that agents do six of them. You have to do six a month. When I say require, you're off the team if you don't. It's that simple. And it really is that simple. If you don't do some of the 100% items, I have items which are 100%, there is no reason me as a team leader should spend time wasting it on you when I have a bunch of other people that can value that time. So just note that um, these body in motion posts are one of the social medias. The agent is responsible for six a month. Now on the other side, we have a social studio through Lofty. Lofty is Chime, if you're familiar with it. It's a, it's a CRM. And we have a social studio through there. In the social studio, we do posts on behalf of the agent. So we create the post and put them up. When we create a post, I'm gonna do one live here. We literally say custom post and you'll notice here, <clears throat> let me go back one, one second to log in under the account that has access. So we have an admin account. That admin account actually has ties to every single one of our agent social medias. So we create one post and it blasts out for all the social media for those agents. Um, which is kind of neat. So two types of posts. One is the body in motion, and then this is what the team does for our agents. So as we go in and create a post, you'll notice here if I mouse over, it shows all the agents' names in here. It literally says, I'm putting this post up on behalf of these agents. I'm going to turn off some of the media that we don't use regularly. And th the way that it works is we put up posts, we can schedule them. So you can, you can basically schedule the timing out to say, put it up at, you know, I'm gonna say here today, I'm gonna to put this up at 9.40 a.m. So at 9.40 a.m., my post will go up. Now you'd say, where do I get a post? Very honestly, all over the place. 
you can see an NAR article. You can go out to KCM, which I'm going to show. Um, KCM, if you don't use Keeping Current Matters, it's the opposite of Inman. They're positive. They're not negative. Um, and uh, you can grab any post you want from them. Um, always conscious of where we're putting stuff, right? We don't put home listings on LinkedIn. That's bad form. So we're very conscious about where we put posts. And I have someone in the Philippines that does these posts for me. Her name is Krizza. She's awesome. Um, and Krizza will post these on behalf of the agents. Um, we do Homes for Heroes posts. We do um, you know, news posts, local market update posts. All those happen through the system. So when I see a post that I like, here's, a, here's one from this morning. Uh, it says Americans sitting on tremendous equity. You'll notice that it has here a bunch of information, right? And it's uh, it's basically they're giving you the post, but it's ugly. Like if I posted this on Facebook, it'd be pretty boring. No one would read it. So what I do is I copy that post, and this is where AI kicks in. And I, right now I'm in Chat GPT. I've moved over to Chat GPT. What I want to make sure that you understand is that Chat GPT is not you, right? It's not meant to replace you. It's not meant to be you. Uh, I see a lot of images going up today where they are obviously AI generated and they all look the same. They all look, it's like cars that come out of the wind tunnel, right? They're all boring and they're the same. If you're not reading it, nobody else is reading it. That's the general rule with everything I say. I mean, and, you know, there's a lot of agents in, the, in that big group that I was in that, that do a lot of postcards. Like, I mean, a lot of postcards. And I had just said to them, it's not for me, right? It's just, I, I only market the way that I consume. So it's not for me, but if it's working for you, hell yeah, have at it. So it's put out content that people would want to read, right? That you would want to read. So now if I go into this chat GPT window and I'm literally going to plain text type, I'm not going to use any of my prompts. I'm going to say, make this post better with emoji, emoji. And I'm just going to paste in what I copied and hit enter. Look at how it cleans it up. It's the original wording from it. And this is what the stuff that you can outsource to teams, right? I have, a, I have a person offshore that does this. This is way better looking than what I posted up above. If I take this and copy it, and I'm not going to give Keeping Current Matters a, uh, a, a free ride here. Um, and I go back to my little window and I paste this in. I now have my social media post. The only thing I always add is my Morris agent one. So now <clears throat> I've got a post that looks way better. I will proof it real quick to make sure it's representative of how we operate. DM me to see what equity you have, all good. And now all I need to do is go in to Keeping Current Matters and download the actual image. So this is the image that I wanna download. And then you have a share option and download. And I'm just grabbing the image from my post so that I can put it up, right? Um, and I'm gonna save it here. So now I'm gonna go back to my social media window. And basically I just add the image. Desktop, somewhere here it will be was called what was it called it was called i'm trying to find my post here oh we got a recent so show there taking a second to load a lot of recents while that's loading any questions so far i have one glenn Far so away. if you're using um chime as basically your social media you know output um engine if you're making posts in like canva does it automatically connect or do you have to download and upload you have to download and upload Okay. This and you typically have someone agent. else do that for you, right? Yes. Uh, for most. I post a little bit more than the average Joe, so half is mine, half is them. <laughs> okay. Yep. Okay. So here's a screenshot. So now this is in, this post is ready to go. I have the text. I have the post. I have Facebook and Instagram, and I have that it's going to go on February 19th, and I say schedule. So now it's literally going to distribute this post out to all my team members at one time. Now the AI pinch here is I'm using it, but I'm not letting it fully write it. Now, this is an example. Now, if, if you're using AI, <clears throat> anyone who's ever done a list, you ever try to do a listing write up with AI and it comes out and one, it has a bunch of fair housing violations and, <laughs> and it has all these different things. Well, you can literally type anything. So people go, how do you come up with your ideas for your video? Um, someone blare out a topic on the call. Just give me a topic that you'd love to do a video on someday. Door knocking. Okay. So I would write, write me a video script on real estate door knocking. Make it friendly and interesting. 
So I'm typing just like I would think, right? And now here's the script. And it's telling you what the scene is, what the transition is, what the prep is, right? You could be sitting at a desk saying, I'm prepping, this is the key. This literally writes you the script. I would take this script, cut it, paste it into my video software, and then just start recording. The hardest part of anything we do is execution, right? This, now, I'm not saying I would say it exactly like this. I would read it and still writing all the parts for the video, right? I, I would read it and make it my own, but this is gets you past the writer's block. It gets you going on what you can do. Now, there's a lot of times um, I had to write something up completely unreal estate related, right? And I wanted to just make it a little bit better. And, it, and, and chat GPT, I mean, you can tell how much I use it here. This is a screen that I keep up all day long. Everything I do, if I have an email, I could take the most simple of emails. Let's just take an email. Um, Rob, I'm just trying to find, here we go. So Rob said, team leaders, this is Rob's email to you guys, right? This morning I have a special meeting and complete list of resources. I could literally just take this over to ChatGPT, say make it better and paste this in. It takes Rob's simple email and, and makes it better, right? Uh, and writes it for you. So my point being is, is it's not one thing. It's, it's everything. I use it across the board. You can see how many I use. I mean, just I can just keep scrolling for hours here in terms of what I do. Real estate outlooks, circle of excellence, late cleanups, heroic boot and fire department rescue. I had this right up a rescue that's being featured on ABC News, right? Like, it, it takes what you do and amplifies it. And that's the rule with anything to do with AI in our group. And I'm gonna show you some things that you're gonna be like, I, I can't do that. And I'm like, well, I, you can, you definitely can. <laughs> um, so any questions on the AIs, how we, we, and we do 20 posts a month for our agents. So they have to put 20 posts up. Uh, we do it on their behalf. Questions on that? Okay. Um, all right. Let me show you AI interaction in the CRM because I think this is a cool one. Um, so AI interaction. We have an AI bot. This is my screen. It's just a contact record. It doesn't matter if you're using KB Core or other. Um, over here, it shows who the person's assigned to, right? I'm the assistant on all of my team leads. Anything that is a team lead, I get to be an assistant on so I can monitor the traffic on it, right? So I turned on... Liz, Liz is our AI assistant. Liz gets turned loose and will cover off topics that we choose. So in this instance, it can qualify a lead, schedule appointment, or help with listing suggestions. It does it 100% on its own. Now, I know everyone's going, hold on a second. What if it says the wrong thing? What if it's not perfect? What if it's not this? What if it's not that? And as someone in the mastermind that I was at last week in Utah said to me, who is the biggest limiter in your business? Like, what's the biggest limiter? And the person looked me in the eye about a foot and a half away from my face and they pointed and said, you. Everything you think is the problem and everything you don't do is, the, is, is what the solution is to that problem. So I turned on that week to 300 of my leads AI. Out of 300, six are now active, actively working with us. 300 that would have sat in a database and did nothing without AI. So this one in particular, uh, and not all of them will say, hey, I want to buy a house tomorrow. But if they tell me all their specs, they're now in my system and getting valuable information opposed to nothing. So we said, well, this was one that I turned it on to. It ends up that he was Spanish speaking. He was responding in English. But as soon as I noted, because my system tells me when people are interacting, as soon as I noted that he was he was he was going back and forth, and then he put up one Spanish post, I immediately turned it over to my agent Kenny, who speaks Spanish fluent, right? So if you notice, uh, I um, I'm just going to get on the line here. So this person, I went in and I basically added him into the system. This was AI auto texting them, and it said, "Hey, we received your online inquiry." He didn't reply. He didn't reply. He didn't reply. He didn't reply. Oh. He replied, and that was from basically the 22nd 
to the 30th. Now, all I'm going to say is, does anyone on their team believe that their agent will send a text one, two, three, four times over seven days and not think that they're doing something wrong or they're going to they're gonna quit or they're going to keep going at it? Because I know my agents won't. <laughs> they will not follow up in that, that kind of manner. And then all of a sudden it said the, pr the price of a few options was reduced. Would you be interested? Boom. This is the AI engine saying, hey, I have some things that have been price reduced. And he says, oh, now I'm interested. He replies. So now he's talking with AI. Are you planning your next move within a year or so? Yes. Uh, it will be glad to help you with the buying process. Love to get some info about what you're looking for. What locations are you interested in? Yes, but after work. So it basically he was saying, okay, I'll be putting you in touch with a colleague. The system did this automatically. And then I took him off campaign and turned him over to Kenny directly. All now, of Blake, that interaction over the entire week was AI up to the point of an intervention. Is that system, just a matter of turning that on? All and I did was when you have to input stuff. All I did was hit here and said qualify the lead. Okay. So my mindset, Scott, was it'll embarrass me, it'll hurt me. And you know what's been embarrassing? I have 21,000 leads that haven't been touched. That's embarrassing. That hurts me. <laughs> so my mindset has completely changed. And the AI really actually has had good interactions. If you don't think it works, subscribe to any of them. Put your name in and act like a client. That's what I did. Now, I made one grave mistake when I initially launched it. And I'll forewarn you guys. In At least in Chime, the system does not... It, when you say go with AI, it goes and it doesn't matter that you did it at 1130 at night like I did. And you can tell it's texting, it's not emailing. So it was texting people at 11 at night. So don't turn it on at 11 at night. Uh, the moment I stopped that, as soon as I realized that I stopped it, um, it was, I was pretty deep. I was about 100 people deep. So I'm sure there were a lot of pissed people because I did that. But it is what it is. I got Now, my point being is, is that these databases exist. You have contacts in there. And we know that the eighth or ninth contact is the one. And we know that nobody is good at doing that. AI is doing it. And what do you have to lose? <laughs> That's the point, right? So this is a way that we're using it. Now, our AI will schedule appointments. It'll help with qualifying. Um, there are some leads that they've actually told us their beds, baths, and locations. The AI puts them on the, the engagement campaign. For us, it's called engagements, which is listings. It automatically starts sending them listings. We didn't do a thing. We didn't put in the listing. We didn't do anything. AI did it all for us within the CRM. I'll pause for a second. Do you have a, an AI that will scrub, uh, like you said, the database? I, I have 11 years worth of every single lead from my top producer that I don't even use because it's so out of whack. But some don't have phone numbers. Some, you know, maybe have bad emails. Is there a way to scrub that? Or you just put it in and let the AI do what it does? Yeah. So um, if you doubt the information, you could take it offline. I can give you a guy uh, that you can you can use through WhatsApp, and they'll uh -huh. basically clean up all the contacts with current contacts, three names, three phone numbers for three cents each contact. Uh -huh. um, and let me maybe I'll explain that for a moment um, too. So we do quite a few campaigns, and I know a lot of people don't do their own Facebook ads. They don't they don't run Facebook ads because they're they're complicated. Very frankly, they're very complicated. What we do is we target areas. We don't run broad boot. We don't do boosts. I mean, I shouldn't say we never do, but very rarely do we ever do boosts because it's a waste of money. Targeted ads is where we're at. And the reason is we surround, we kind of bang on people. And oops, my microphone kicked on. You guys can still hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Something happened with my mic. Um, we target. So a good example is I, I, I love the town that I live in and I pound on the town, right? And I have every single phone number and every single address for everyone in the town. What I did was I went out and pulled the tax record. I cleaned it up a bit so I didn't have a lot of the ones that were not owner occupied because I didn't want them on my list for the regular stuff. Sent it off to my guy. He came up with three phone numbers, three names. I uploaded that list to Facebook and I made ads that only go to that list. I spend like 30 cents a day because it's only the people in my town. I'm not spending $20 a day for a bunch of people kicking a tire that have no engagement. And when I go down Main Street in my town, people go, oh, hey, I saw you. Or, hey, man, you're everywhere. I see your face everywhere. Well, the reason why is because I'm putting my ad in front of them for peanuts. There's billboards. There's an agent in town that has a billboard 
and uh, she sold four houses in the town, right? And here I am doing almost 25% of the inventory in the town. So it's, it's a very targeted razor sharp. I mean, we'd have to spend three hours going through how the whole process works, but if you can make your list well, and translate that to Facebook and target ads, you're going to save yourself a boatload of money, ton of money <laughs> um, on it. And there's no violations on Facebook for that? No. Because that kind of just like the, the fair housing stuff or whatever. You're uploading your client list, so it's legitimate. Oh, nice. Yes. Technically, your client list. <laughs> they don't know your clients yet, <laughs> is the way to put it. <laughs> cool. So that was how AI works. Now, um, let me just talk for a second about the people tab here. So we have, um, I'm going to turn off some filters so you can see, um, uh, everything here. So I'm in the filter. There we go. So now, um, in this view, you'll notice something as you go across, there's something called a lead pond and I call it the opportunity basin. So when you go into this, we, we tailor these leads and they're leads that come in from all kinds of sources and it all depends on how they're categorized, but the lead pond is my Morris agent lead source. And it, it is not your, oh, agent, thank you for joining the team. Here you go, you can go right on it. Our agents have to qualify for it. So to qualify to have access to our leads, you have to have six sessions uh, and that we have conversations and dialogues. And what I mean by that is, if I said uh, to my agents, I want you to call your SOI, they will all sit there and, and bobble and, and not be able to do it. They can't figure out how to have a conversation, a real human conversation with people. So what we do is we have sessions three times a week where we actually script and it's in person. You cannot get credit for being on a Zoom. We don't even provide on a Zoom. The only time we do it for Zoom is someone that's out of the area. Like I have a Boston agent. Uh, he's He goes on. He's allowed to see a special link. Everyone else has to be in person. This is the only way to do it. I can't coach that remotely let's put it that way i mean i do with the boston agent but he gets the value of the people being in person we record every session and they have to attend six before they can go on leads the capacity on leads is 30 a, a person you can't have more than 30 uh, because they can't handle it <laughs> the less i give the more they do um so and this pond is an area where we get leads and they can do things with them um once they pull out and they start to interact, the lead gets assigned to them and they have to behave in certain ways and then the lead goes back to them. The system manages that for me. So that's kind of a tool that we use as this pond-based system. Um, I will note, up until January 1 of this year, I was uh, basically pissing my leads away. And here, and let me explain why I say that now. Now I'm smarter. <laughs> I require all leads that I generate, team leads, they have to interact on the CRM. You cannot make the phone call from your cell phone. Well, you can, but it has to be through the CRM app. You cannot text from your cell phone. You're on my platform with my leads. If you do not, I put you off leads. You, you get off all of our, our distribution. And the reason for that is everyone thought they were doing more than they were, and they weren't. So in our system, I'm going to take just one lead of, uh, of my leads, and I'll just show you something here. Um, let me just go back here, filter this out. So if I take one of my leads, I have a, I have a test lead that I use for, for everything. I'm gonna call it Elizabeth, my wife, uh, Elizabeth Glenn. So this, this test lead, <clears throat> when I'm in the system, if I call, I can click a button. And when I click that button, if you're looking at my screen, it pops up on my phone and dials my phone, my cell phone. I answer the call, it connects Elizabeth to me. I'm not going to answer because she'll kill me. I'll wake her up. Um, and then from that point forward, the call is recorded in the system. I can text while I'm on the phone line with them and send them one of my templates. If I have, you know, anything I have template wise, I can send them from the system right while I'm on the phone. Oh, hey, what? I'm going to send you my, my contact details right now. And you can text it while you're on the phone call. When you're done, you put in your call notes and then you hit, you hit uh, talked and you're done. That logs the call. Now, here is what's so wild. If you make a phone conversation and it's over three minutes, it counts for a conversation. Anything under three minutes with us does not count as a conversation. That's a, I, I, dialed, a, I dialed a number, I got a voicemail, and I acted like I did something that made my business move forward. That's not, that's not acceptable. 
So what we do is you have to be on a phone call for three minutes or more. Once that happens, it's considered a logged call. And when it's a logged call, it automatically passes it over to CSU and marks you for one conversation. Because we know X number of conversations equal X number of set appointments equals X number of appointments met. So everyone who interacts with the system, they don't have to log anything to my tracking system. It all goes automatically over there if it's over three minutes. If it's less, they get a dial, but they don't get a call. They don't get a conversation. And the system does all this automatically for us. Um, any questions on that piece? So texts and emails have to be on our system. At any point, can they take the client off the system? They'll get no credit for it with me. So I guess the way to put it is if I um, I have Krizza trolling through the database and if she sees that a client's gone dark for more than a few days, they get a warning shot and then it comes back. And the reason is if there's no log, if they don't show an interaction, it perks to the top of my list when I do a sort and I go, they're not talking to them. So now they can do manual logging. We allow them to do manual logging through the system here. Right here is a box, I'll close it down, that lets them log a call, text, and email. But it, but I need to see regular interactions or I pull the leads back. I guess my question would be like at a certain point, and we all know that this kind of happens, right? Where you are interacting with someone on, you know, a regular basis from your own personal number. Cause I imagine that those texts are, are they coming through as your personal number or they're um, coming okay, through as okay, like a lock, your lock number. number? Your business number. Okay, so and you're getting push notifications to your phone. So if someone wants to text their client directly yeah. from their phone, because like I'm thinking you're on the road, you might not have it in front of you, right? You know, they, they use our app. So within the system, there is, I'm trying to get the screen out of the way here. Within the system, we have a functionality where every single person has a, has a phone number. So every person on the team has a personal number. This is their business number. That's how I position it with them. I go, what company doesn't have a business number, right? I said, and the way I position it with the team, I'm saying it just like I do. So every company you call has a business number. If your business number is your phone, when does your business ever turn off? When you go on your week worth of vacation, who do you forward? How do you forward? How do you pick who you forward from your cell phone to your business number? So we position it where the business number is it. This is your business number. It's your ability to vacation. It's your ability to pass off your calls for five days while you get clarity and love your family and do all those things. That's how we position it. And it doesn't, you don't think that it's had any effect on, you know, productivity in terms of being able to stay on top of their clients when they're on the go? No, because the app prompts you just like a text does on your phone. Okay. So when it comes in, it pops up, says you got a new text. You just click the link just like you would. It brings you back to Lofty and then you text right from there. And he's given okay. them 30 leads, so they want to use it because that's where all the leads are, I'm imagining. <laughs> now yeah, no, I have no it. issue with, with that. I was just trying to figure out, and maybe this is just me being a little antiquated. It's like, you know, all of us, I think sometimes you're on the go and you're you're running here, there, and wherever, and you want to be able to say, oh, I just, you know, I saw a house with X client, but it's really a good house for Y client. I want to text them right now and tell them, right? You know, so... Yeah, it's just a little bit of discipline. And I'll tell you, I'm, I'm straight shooting. It was initially bedlam. And then when they realized that they actually can have a life outside of real estate and they don't have to look down at their phone with all the notifications and their, their OCDs get at them and they have to clear them, that all of a sudden you have some kind of control on your life because Chime allows you to set your working hours and turn them off. So, I mean, it sounds crazy. I always said that people who say I'm available 24 seven, I'm like, well, that's not very scarce. That says that you're not busy, right? Like I always look at that and I'm like, you can pick and choose to jump on anything you want, but don't say that. And I teach my agents that. So um, this gives them a business number that's theirs. It's a text number. It has a whole bunch of functionality to it that works within the system. It does take a little bit of learning curve. But once they're on and they realize if you want lead flow and if you want regular interaction, you need to you need to do this. So hypothetically, let's say your agent says that they stop working at what, what time do you say? Eight, nine? Mm -hmm. what, what do you recommend? So at eight o'clock, the client texts or calls. What is the CSU response? Uh, I'm sorry, the lofty response. Uh, what's the AI? How does it handle it? No, no AI on that at all. Now they okay. could do a campaign if they wanted. No one does. Basically, the, the notifications to them stop, 
they can check and respond all they want. Okay. But yeah. the client, so the client doesn't get a response. Hey, sorry, you know, we'll get back to you first thing in the morning. Yeah. It's just, it, it goes to voicemail text. That's not ringing. That's right. That's okay. right. Yep. 100%. And then in the morning it, it'll push. Yeah. Yeah. And that happens. So um, if we do a lot of Redfin and Redfin tend to be all hours of the night, but we only distribute them from eight to eight because it's just too disruptive to agents. So at 8 a.m., the round robin goes boom, and everyone gets these these leads blasted to them. <laughs> it's it's crazy. Now um, for those Redfin leads, though, and I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, the typical like when I used to pay for the Zillow leads or Realtor.com, which I'm not anymore. If you don't respond back, generally in the first like minute, they are texting five people at the same time. Is that the same? Um, theirs is you have to grab it, and once you reply once, it's yours. So I have a I I have to actually click the link, which we do through a Google number. Uh -huh. I'm doing that to, to make sure we don't lose it. Once I have it, you don't have to do anything okay. until the next morning. But that's you personally. So you're clicking all the time when one comes in. Yeah. Whenever they come in, the Google number shows it for me. We have it going to a Google number and I click it to grab the link, grab the lead. Okay. Yeah. And I never service them myself, but um, we're converting on Redfin about six times the average Redfin agent right now. We have a really high conversion ratio. They keep giving us more and more zones. So um, let me just see here. Give me one second. Uh, I'm just looking to see. Okay, so let me talk. I'll go back to Opus Clip in a minute. I, I I know I use Google Suite. I'm a believer in branding. So I use our Morris Asian emails. Everyone's on my email. I pay for it. Um, I get that it's not cheap. Uh, in fact, it's a, it's a fairly big monthly expense. I think right now I'm up to about, I don't know, 450 bucks a month for the emails for all the team. But that's including the full G Suite, which we live in, right? I just recommend if you're going to have it for the team, brand it with your brand because everything that goes out has it and it kind of brings this world around you. Uh, I'm not going to say a whole lot more other than we use G Suite. We use their forms. We use them for client events. We don't take things out to Evite and Event. We bring them right to our forms and right to Google Sheets. Um, we do pie events. We do all kinds of events, but they're all managed through the G Suite and the CRM, not um, external platforms. It's just how we do it. I'm not saying that those external platforms don't work uh, because I've used plenty of them very successfully in the past with other things. Um, a game changer for us of recent, we do a lot of video calls. And I mean a lot. Um, I think I have a library of about a thousand of them. So every call that we do gets recorded. When they get recorded, we have a platform. It's called Rewatch. And it, as far as I know, it's only for Google. It might be for other platforms like uh, like Zoom and things like that. And the way that this works is um, you have a library and the library is fully searchable. So for instance, our calls this morning, I have one coming up soon. I'm gonna actually have to push that a little bit. Um, our calls this morning uh, are already in the system. So when we join our Google Meet, Rewatch joins as a person, records the video. What it does then is it takes that video, like this is one of our morning huddles. If I click on it, it takes the video, it creates a full transcript of the entire video, and it creates a highlight for jump to of the video. So if I go the importance of video marketing, if I click this and I say advice on handling bidding wars, it will jump right to that portion. It jumps right to that portion of the video. So you can, all our agents can go in, any content we've created or talked about on our calls, they can immediately jump to the section, see a full transcript, and also get highlights. It, it creates action items from the meetings <laughs> um, as well. So it, it picks up through AI the things that I say and creates my follow-ups to the meeting for me. I go through them at the end of the day and take care of them. This platform connects to it. I think it does actually do Zoom and other things. I use it for just Google Meets. And it, it has access to my calendar and it literally queues up my calls so that I can, um, I can see them as they come through and it automatically. So like, like you'll see here, here's all my, my, my calls coming. It will automatically connect to these, record them. And all I have to do is publish it at the end. Huge platform. So if I go up to the top, and I type CSU, enter, it'll do a search. Do I want to do a CSU notification changes? Do I want to have to see how to assign forms? Do I want to connect it to dot loop? I can click on any of these in my training on demand. Here's a screen capture. Here's how to do it. Everything we do is on this platform. How much is that platform a month? 
Um, 79 to start. And I think it's like 20 bucks a user. I got to say somewhere in that range. I got rid of Trainual. I got rid of all the other platforms that I use um, and just went to this because this was the answer for everything I needed. And when you say $20 a user, like do you give your team one user login or do they each have their own login? I'm configured as local and remote. So local, because uh, remote, as I said earlier, if you're not in our conversation mastery calls in person, you don't get access except if you're remote. So I keep those accounts different. I think I have three accounts. Okay. Game changer. Love it. Like so good. <laughs> so now uh, let me just do one thing. Give me one second. I just want to let them know that I'm going to be running a little bit late. Hey, Brian, is anyone here? Can you, uh, I'm just running a little late. Can you guys kick off the call and I'll join for the last five minutes? Do you mind? You don't have to bring up dashboards for it. Just connect on the weekend. Sorry. So I just want to let them know. Um, we have our, our morning huddle and basically what we do, I'm going to talk about CSU for a little bit of a call and then I go back to two other quick solutions. Um, let me just jump to one solution. I Many of you know, or that you don't mean in the past, I do a ton of video, right? And I do a ton of video on BombBomb. Bomb. I recently got away from BombBomb Bomb, and I'm using an application called Dub, D-U-B-B. -B. Um, and let me just, uh, I'm going to bring you to Dub on the web page here with the, with the share. Um, so Dub allows me, it's a video library. So if I want to record a video, I come to Dub. If I want to embed a video in all of my emails, CRM, anything I send, it's in Dub. Um, Dub, all I have to do is click record a video. It pops it up. I say, I want to do a webcam. In a moment, it'll show my webcam like we're looking at. And my mic's there, all is good. I hit the record button and I record and I'm on my way. It's that simple. It embeds, I can stream it directly to YouTube. Uh, you can upload, you can do screen captures, all kinds of cool things. All I'm, uh, We are a video forward team and I'm gonna show you an email because I'm on a massive recruitment uh, campaign right now. And this tool, DUBB, um, just is a little bit of a level up from, from uh, Bomb Bomb, just a, just a hair. And I was, so to get a fix, I was a Bomb Bomb fanatic. One year I did 11,000 Bomb Bomb videos, like crazy numbers. Uh, and I, for me to switch, you know, it must have been a pretty, pretty big deal because I love their solution. There's some things that I lost, but there's so much that I gained that this, this is really is a great solution. So if you're going to do video, I suggest taking a look at Dub. It is a little more expensive than BombBomb. Bomb. I think it's $59 a month. Here's my rule for team members. If you're not doing at least 30 videos a month, no use in spending any money on this. Don't, don't bother. Don't do it. I do not pay for this for my team members. I found out that they just don't use it effectively. Um, about a third of the team uses it. All the rest just use their cell phone and they embed a video. We require you to put a video with every single offer you give. Um, some use this, some use their cell phone and just send a video attached to the email. Uh, but video is key. So Dub is a big one for us. I just want to make sure I didn't miss uh, showing you that, that it's cool. And in our CRM, if I start an email to somebody, I'll just pick any old Joe. Um, if I start an email to somebody, I can just click this little button here and it brings dub up and I can bring my whole library in or I can record it with my webcam and it drops it right into the video. I'm under Liz's account, so it doesn't really know me. That's my other camera over here. Um, but that's the way it works. So it's embedded and I can drop videos right in. I'm going to show you an example of a video that I use for recruitment. Let me just show you what I sent this morning. I just literally sent it before we got on the call. <clears throat> so I am doing a massive recruitment campaign. Um, Oh, does anyone have anything they want to say? No? Okay. Uh, massive recruitment. I need 34 agents before the end of the year, so I'm pushing super hard. Um, I put up an ad. I've got a response, right? This is a person who came into my system to ask me to join the team. So they get this response, which is a cool, really cool email. But what's more cool about the email is the next step. How can you say that you're video forward if you don't do video, right? So when that person, it says, so excited to get to know you better, click here for the video, right? When they click this video, this is what they see. I'm going to hit play for a moment. Hello there, Glenn Baker here, founder and team leader with the Morris Agent Team. We are a progressive video forward team. In the next few slides, I'm going to ask you some questions. And if you could answer them via video, that would be a great start. Following that, there's some more steps to come. Keep an eye. So now they say, let's go. 
Okay, you made it to the next step. So my question for you is, why would you be a great fit for this position? Now they can click this button. You notice I don't give them an option to text, email. If they are not comfortable being on video, they are not for my future team, right? They're just not there. So now they have to hit this button. I'm going to request permission. I'm going to show you how it will work. This is them video interviewing. So now I'm looking at me and I'm going to go... I'd be a great fit for the team because I want to make a ton of money. Right? So now I'd be a great fit for the team because I want to make a ton of money. So they say yes. Okay, another question for you. What was the last book you read and why did you love it? And then they record. And then it basically takes them through a bunch of these these four questions. So this is another test, 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 test. I'm just gonna say yes. Four questions. So this this should be an easy one. What was your last vacation and why did you go there? So I'm going to stop here. And at the end, it captures their info to make sure that I have it correct, right? Like their name and stuff like that. I'm going to stop. But here's the logic behind this. One is, you notice I'm not asking them anything to do with anything to do with real estate, right? In great detail, right? And the reason for that is I realize that there are either people that will fit or won't fit. And those who know my team know we're a little cultish. I mean, I, 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 for lack of a better term. So I want to weed out people that are not in my core value set quickly. I don't ever get to the disc until I see this, right? And the disc, I don't even use, I, I'm an idiot. I can't read the disc reports. I'm going to be, I'll be honest with you, like, I'm, I'm not smart enough for that. Maybe my wife would be, but I'm not. So I look at a disc, I look at four things. Are they D or an I? Because if they're on a salesperson role and they're not, they're not for me. So I use this as my preliminary. Once they finish it, they get a text saying, thanks so much for doing it. This is all automated. Thanks so much for doing it. Uh, we're watching the video and we'll come back to you if there's a next step. If they don't fit, if I think that right from there, they're not going to be a great fit, they'll get a Dear John letter, a nice one saying, you know, right now, probably not the perfect opportunity for you, that type of stuff. And it sends them a video back of that, on, on video forward, right? So we do this a lot. And this is part of my recruitment. And the way that I try to do the next steps are, um, we, I know body count is where I need to be, but I need to have it where I'm not wasting a ton of time on body count, <laughs> right? I need more people to, to deal with all the leads that I have. Um, this video base is really what I'm using to do it. Now this, I use this for tons of other things. I use it for open houses so that everyone, I know everyone's saying, what's the platform? It's called Video Ask is the name of the platform. Um, video ask. It's really a great, great platform. If used, if you're not going to use it, don't bother. Uh, I use it for things like open house follow-ups. I use it for all kinds of, um, uh, different, you know, methods to, to get to clients, but like a good one is thanks for visiting my open house. Um, I have one that you basically, when you come in and you visit the open house, it says, Hey, I know that only 4% of people buy the house that they visit for an open house. Was this one right for you? And if they say no, then it takes them to, oh, well, what did you like? What didn't you like? Like, it's a really effective way to put me in front of them again, facial recognition, without me spending a bunch of time with every single lead. Um, so this is a video ask is a really cool platform. It can be branded for you. You'll notice that in the email I showed you, wherever that email was, uh, where is that email, that it's the Morris Agent Team, and it's called talk.morrisagentteam. So that is a part of our, our platform and in our ecosystem there. Um, any questions? And if not, I'll wrap with showing you some Sisu, which- I have a question. Yes. Um, and Glenn, so I've been following you now for what, almost uh, two years and I'm two years behind you as far as your technology. Do, do you use the VR assistant to help monitor all of these things? I mean, I know you're, you come from the IT background, but for the rest of us peons who are just trying to keep up with technology, what would you recommend for us that, you know, we want to do this, like I'm watching this and Christina's next to me. We're, we're just in amazement as usual with what you can do. But like, this is so much information, which of course is technology. How do we, how, how would we really get started? Like, how do you do this? <laughs> so I think it's a matter of where you want to focus. So my thing is, is that this stuff didn't just crop up in a day, right? And that's the thing that everyone, everyone walks away from conferences and wants to like go do a thousand things. If you're, if you need to lead gen, then I would focus on how AI does lead gen and get that in place so that it's solid as a rock, right? 
if you need to recruit, like right now, I know I need to recruit. And I had, I had, as of two weeks ago, zero recruitment engine, nothing, not even a checklist. I didn't recruit one agent. They all came to my team through referral, right? So I said, how do I do this and keep myself sane? So I locked myself away for two nights. I'm pretty compulsive that way. And I created this massive checklist of how I wanted to interact with people, not how every other agent did recruitment. How do I want to treat people? And I literally wrote it that way. And then I started designing the process from there and made these videos. And that video you saw with the whips way yeah. literally took me 15 minutes. But when you imagine it across five to 10 candidates, I'm getting a day right now. How awesome. much leverage did I give myself by spending that time? Absolutely. So I am monitoring all of the inputs directly right now. Um, and it's, it's hard. It, I'm not going to BS yet. It is. I, I have feeds coming from everywhere. I block out time and I just do those pieces. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, so Scott bite the, eat the elephant bite by bite is the answer. <laughs> um, my CSU environment makes me sane. I'm going to show you a couple things. And I think CSU could almost be like, let's all just get on a call another time. And I'd be happy to go through it. I can't, help anyone by setting it up because I spent so much time doing it. You'd have to see just a terrific organization that way. Um, and it's a lot of money, make no mistake, but it makes me a lot of money. So that's why I use it. So I'm just going to, let me just show you something real quick. Uh, I just want to go back to Opus clip. So I don't forget that. Um, it's in one of my windows here. There, there it is. So I just want to double back Opus clip. We uploaded the video first thing when we got on the call and what it did was, um, it took that video and I'm in the wrong window here. I just have to find it. Uh, it's somewhere here. Opus, Opus, where are you, buddy? Oh, there it is. Um, so it created a video from this. Now, it, Opus didn't like most of my content because this really wasn't broadcast content, but it created a population about 2.4 square miles. And what we have here is just ever love and goodness, home slice of America. We've got everything you can want in one small town. If you're looking to just have a cup so of coffee, it cut this up. You have food and coffee and many other coffee places on me. Added captions. If you're looking for any other type of food. And made the whole entire video under under a minute for social media from what was a two and a half minute, minute, minute video. So this cut those pieces, put it all together and made a video for me. If you want to get on social media and you have any kind of interviews, oh, this clip is for you. It's not good for just raw like images like home tours. It's terrific for anything you've spoken word, okay? Dirt cheap, 20 bucks a month. You could pay thousands to editors and you don't need to for this type of content. So I just want to double back and make sure I didn't leave that off the table because it was number one as we started. So if you do a, a podcast, would you use this to chop up the podcast into multiple reels? Funny you should ask. Check this out. Oh, right here. This uh, this is the town tour. There it is. All of these are the podcasts that I cut up. And how many did you get out of one podcast? Uh, this was about a twenty minute podcast, and I think my folder eighteen. That's not a bad uh, not a bad return on a twenty minute one twenty minute video, eighteen posts for the month, right? Yeah. Yeah. So highly suggest, and by the way, it wasn't stacked like this. It was two different, us separately, it cut us and put us together on top of each other. Okay. No, that's cool. Cause I know that a lot of the folks who offer to do podcasting for you, they, as part of their fee, will chop it up and put it into real. So if you could save the money on that and do it through Opus and use that for your other content as well, it's a cost save, right? Yep. Yep. So let me just... Take two seconds here before we wrap on CSU and why it's so important to us. So if I go to CSU, I'm going to go to this year. And this is why it's a pulse because we have, I have pretty lofty aspirations. So you can notice that we have, we have to have 65,000 conversations. It's crazy, right? And what I've done is I've reverse engineered it. And I know that based on our current projections, I need 34 agents to fulfill my goal this year of making it to 300 transactions. So the way that it works is we need to have this many buyer appointments set for the year. We need to have this many uh, appointments met for the year to achieve the goal of my 300, right? 
we everything we drive lofty when you make a conversation over three minutes it logs here automatically you can't increment this on your own manually it basically just does it if you have three minutes <clears throat> um if, if an appointment so how do i manage a team on a friday uh, we have a call every morning and they're actually on it right now i'm going to join in just a minute they have a call and voila they i go bring up your dashboards so the team brings up their dashboard i go who's blue who's orange and when someone goes, I'm orange, the blues never talk because they're always behind, right? The oranges are like, I'm orange. And they'll say it on the call. And I'll go, great. What do you, what do you orange in? Buyer appointments. Great. How did you make it happen? And what we're doing on those calls is letting people know who's performing and who's not, right? Now, we have a dashboard up, so they kind of know that. But it's in your head. And what it, that, that call does, what this dashboard does on their phone is, what did you do yesterday? And what are you going to do about it today? That's the only conversation we have every single day. One time in the morning, 15 minutes. What did you do yesterday? What are you going to do today? If you did no calls yesterday, you now have 48 calls to do today. How are you going to make that happen before you leave the office? Right? So that's how we operate as a team. Now, for me, as a manager, I have. I just want to show you two things, and I'm going to have to bounce off to, to send some love to my team. Conversations lead to appointments, but either listing or not, right? These appointments, if you set them and they never meet, we can all agree that we have a qualification problem, right? The person's great at setting appointments, but they're shitty at making it happen. So um, these all tell me how a person's doing. Every person has their own dashboard. I have a view at every one of their dashboards. So if I see someone that has a ton of conversations and a ton of appointments, but they never meet them, I know what to focus on. Qualification questions. If they have a ton of conversations and never set an appointment, they definitely have a dialogue problem. I deal with them. I work with them, right? But for me, I've deduced this down to individuals. So we have an agent accountability report. Every other Friday, the agents come and they present this to me. I don't pop it up on my screen. They're presenting their business to me. And I'm showing you mine for now. I'm gonna, let me go over here. <clears throat> and the way that it works is if you're blue, you're off track. You are not on the right path in terms of timing, right? Like for me, I'm supposed to be at 108 conversations and I've only had 14 to date. Right. That's from. Uh, yeah, that's to date from the first of the year. Now, that means that one, either I have an extraordinarily high conversion ratio because my dial for, for appointments met is orange, which is good. But I'm not doing the activity. So if I did 108. Imagine how many more I'd have in that orange dial. I'd be killing it like I probably because my conversion rate is so high. So what they do is they present their business and we look through and understand what are they doing here and why. Then we scroll up. And this is something that's so powerful. And you look at it and you go, hold on a second. I have $48,000 sitting right in my pipeline. I'd better get these to move along. Catherine on my team, I just showed her it the other day. You know what she said to me? She goes, I have, I have a quarter, I, I'm, a, I'm a quarter of my year's goal already. I'm in February. I go, right. So maybe you were a little, you were sandbagging your goal. Do you think? But go to your agents on your team when you leave this call and say, how many deals do you have in hand? How many, how much, ha what's your production? If it's not in their face all the time, they're always they're on, they're like a, a rudderless ship in a harbor, right? They can't know where to go and you can't have a conversation. So my team has to come to this call with this up and they have to be able to talk about it. And they do not miss anything. Um, like I have here, I'm really bad. Like this is a rental. I should have my commission in here for these so that I know my true pipeline. They come with all of these populated so I always know what their deal is and how much they're making. Glenn, with that number, is that, so let's say you have a buyer who's pre-approved for 350000 So do you just take the estimated commission on three fifty, or is that when yeah. they're actually in the contract? Yeah, no, it's based on their approval level. Okay. And this is pipeline management. What, what, you know, it's so funny how what sales organizations don't do this, right? Except, except realtors. <laughs> and it excites people. As soon as I started requiring them to present their business and show me this number, they were like, holy cow, I got a lot of money in the hopper. My new guy looks, he has his first commission, $21,000. He's like, I made that like in, in a month. I can make $21,000 in my first month in the business. That's what you want. So, all right. With that said, um, any questions? I know there's questions. I'm happy to take anything offline or do a coffee with anybody if they need to. So um, I would love uh, a little bit more training on CSU if you want to schedule like another time that we could go through that because I haven't even started the CSU training. I have it. I, I'm it's part of my program. I have CSU and I haven't even gotten into it because I I don't even do half a lofty that you have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Anybody else have questions? 
Thank you so much, Glenn. It was really an amazing uh, session. Uh, okay. Would you please share that WhatsApp scrubber if uh, you're going to share it here or? Yeah, if you can do me a favor, just um, shoot me an email. Uh, it was sure. in the invite from Rob, and then I'll email it back to you. Yep. I will. Hey, Glenn, Thank you, Glenn, Eric, Eric Pruitt, how much is the CSU? You said it was expensive. What does that run? Um, oh, boy. Uh, I think it's around 1800 a quarter and $50 a month a user. Okay, thank you. Yeah. It, I, I my, my last year I spent around 15,000 on it. Great, thanks. Okay. Game changing, Eric. Game changing. I'll tell you like that that is what I attribute the change in the business to. Big leap though, big number, I know it. All right. Cool. Anyone else reach out, I'm happy to help and uh thank you, Glenn. Help with use of your time. Thanks again. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Glenn. Yeah, bye -bye. Thanks, Thank Glenn. you so much. Bye-bye. Thanks, Glenn.